back in this bitch, uh Know we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came equipped, uh So promise you don't want Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 More Than 92 podcast, where we always keep it 100 with you. We're your host, Harrison. Najee. All right, today we are jam-packed with the upcoming draft coming up. We thought it was no better person to have than friend of the show back with us today. So welcome back, everybody, Mr. Teron Davenport. We done made some upgrades since the last time you've been here. How's everything? Yeah, I see you got the effects going. That's what's oh, of course. How's, how's everything been for you since the last time? Since the off season, I guess. Yeah, everything's been good off season. I kind of took it a little more easy than I, I normally do, but I think it's probably was necessary. So it's been a very good laid back off season. I've enjoyed it, but it's time to get back in the swing of things. You know, this draft is coming, and there's a lot to to go over. Yeah, I know. Um, I don't know if that video, I don't know if the episode we did was bad luck or what, but uh, I was so upset that we dropped that episode Friday and they lost oh, that exact oh, next day. And yeah. the way that they lost just was heartbreaking. I mean, I've never been kicking the, we pinpointed every, I think I went back and listened. We said everything that they needed to do right that they went and did <laughs> except for one simple thing that I didn't think that needed to be discussed. And that was just not give the other team the ball three to four times. I think everybody whipped out the shape. You don't have, I'm not going to go back into it because it's just gut wrenching, but just the timing of that video and we've all picked them to go to the Super Bowl, and then the Rams win it. It was just a uh, RIP, but I'm not going to bring it up because I see Ryan Tannehill can't post anything right now without getting ate up alive. But yeah, uh, he's he's a hot hot topic right now. Yes, he really is. Um, I did want to ask you before we got into the draft breakdown: Has this free agency been? How has this free agency been in your opinion? To me, it's been like a Madden fantasy draft. But how has it been in yours? Yeah, it's been just like that—a Madison uh, Madden uh, fantasy draft because you got players. I mean, you look at Russell Wilson being traded. It's like a kid on Madden playing out a season franchise mode, you know, uh, Tyreek Hill getting traded, Devontae Adams getting traded. Now you got the Debo Samuel talk. It's It's been crazy, but it's made it a lot more interesting than normal. The Titans themselves, though, they've just kind of like been steady. People uh, look at the lack of acquisitions as a bad thing, but you got to remember they retained players that were big parts of last year's team. So I, I think the Titans free agency, it hasn't been crazy, but it's been good for them. Yeah, I think the Austin Hooper trade, I mean, the Austin Hooper signing would be a good one because the fact that they haven't had a real solid piece at tight end since John. Um, thankfully, yeah. John didn't go to New England and do big numbers, but Austin Hooper was still a significant piece when he had his time in Atlanta. Um, I did wonder, did you do you feel like all these moves kind of shook up the balance of the or how everybody's drafting order is, especially with Jacksonville, I think, going number one? They signed Christian Kirk yeah. to that contract and then Devontae Adams going to the Raiders and so on. Do you feel like it changed the landscape of what the projected, um, the top prospect projection, how it started versus free agency to how it is now? Uh, I think that, I mean, the Jaguars, they still have the first pick as of now. So I don't think that has changed. There's still a team that's heavy building process. And there's a lot that they have to do. They've gone crazy in free agency, so we'll see how that works. But the off season isn't always when you win the Super Bowl, right? So I, I would say there's been a little bit of a shift when you look at the Bengals, though, because they've invested so much in that offensive line. And truly, that was pretty much the only thing that they needed to do because now they have the experience. You got Burrow there, obviously, Chase, Mixon, you know, T. Higgins. We could go on and on. Tyler Boyd. Their team is a, a, a legit team, and I think they'll be uh, a force for the next couple of years. So that, that that was going to be my next question. Who do you feel like, out of all the trades we've seen so far, who do you feel like made the best trades for their squad? I mean, it's hard to doubt what the Dolphins have done, but I just really think that Cincinnati, with getting that offense, after seeing what Jeffrey Simmons did to that offensive line, I mean, he had – Quentin Spain wanting to, you know, <laughs> throw hands, you know, because he was getting dominated so much. So I think when you look at 
just the investment that they made on the offensive line and the upgrades, I feel it's floating under the radar. And uh, that's who I think did, did the best. Now the Dolphins, of course, you know, they did a really good job adding some, you know, dynamic players of Ty- Tyreek Hill specifically. Um, I think the Colts have done, done some good things as well. You know, they, they picked up uh, Yannick and Gakwe, obviously Matt Ryan, um, Stephon Gilmore, but I think it remains to be seen with them. I don't really fear the Colts only because uh, the quarterback situation and um, Jonathan Taylor was good, but I feel like uh, Carson Wentz mobility, little as it was, still helped Jonathan Taylor keep him in, you know, check because he could move. Matt Ryan doesn't move at all, but Matt Ryan is a hell of a, a hell of a mind iq that he has to him so i wouldn't take him for granted i'll never take anybody in our conference for granted so i just think that anything and then stefan gilmore is a good pickup he can still play i actually even though they kind of took a lot of our players i liked a lot of the falcons moves personally to me i think that marcus Mariota in a better division um where he actually gets to shine he's got to sit down a little bit rest himself up and then with cordell patterson plays a little bit to his style i think and arthur smith um, I think that that will play a good hand to them. That was who I thought did pretty good and um, quietly who did pretty good in free agency. But um, I know we did have the AJ debacle, uh, which presented us out to us going into this long term contract. And at first, if we probably could have got him before the Kirk situation, I think we probably could have got it under wraps. But because of the contract with uh, Ryan Tannehill and everything, and then we also have Jeffrey Simmons to worry about next year, and now Debo, which they all have the same agents. Uh, do you feel that uh, we will be seeing a deal this week? Hopefully, I doubt there will be a deal this week. They typically get their deals done in July, whether it's mid July or into training camp, and that's when I see those happening. Now, this is a little bit of a different situation because of how the market exploded. You got the Stefan Diggs deal. You got the Tyreek Hill deal, the Devonte Adams deal. I don't know that AJ Brown is in that category, but very much right there with guys like DJ Moore, you know, uh, at, at 20 million per year. Now that's a number that you could, you could finesse that number, right? You could make it appear like you're the highest paid player by year but the real thing that you focus on honestly is the guaranteed money and i think that's where they're going to have to come in at a higher number and i think that's going to be in the 60 to 70 maybe even 70 plus million dollar range and that is is what i think um will be the biggest part of the sealing that contract yeah i think that i think that uh because i think Devonte adams got like 143 million yeah, yeah, and that's—I mean, that—that's not a number. Those numbers, yeah, they blew up. It was the lesser people that started to get crazier deals, like Stephon Diggs, Tyreek Hill. All those guys are proven. If they don't have a ring, they have the accolades as number one, two, and three in the league. But I think that kind of just propelled it, and then the Debo thing just kind of put more spin on it, even with the league phone. But with that um, being said, and then we with even with the accusation of um, Robert Woods from. Yeah. Do you do you feel that wide receiver should be our priority with this situation with us not locking him in? Because he could hold out. I'm not looking at the voluntary portion of it because Ryan Tannehill has also not shown up. I'm just looking at it from this upcoming. He may sit out this upcoming season. And A.J. Brown does have a injury history every season that he's been with us. He had some type of injury that's at least cost him a game. At least the last two seasons cost him a game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I – I don't think he'll hold out for the season, Mm -hmm. but I could see him not being there until training camp. I could see that. But again, these deals are normally done in mid July. They could, it could be July 15th. It gets wrapped up and here we go. You know, so that's something, I mean, like I'm not taking any time off any vacation time in July because, Hey, we got a deal that could be done and, you know, got to be around for that. As far as, just the the draft itself, I would select the receiver anyway. I think offensive line takes priority over that because you have two starting spots that are yet to be filled. You got a possible in Dylan Radens, but if they go receiver, you know, Traylon Burks, Jahan Dotson, those are guys I think would be there, George Pickens. 
will be there. I think Pickens will come in and be a really nice X for them. Downfield guy. He's a, he's a player. So there will be some options for them. Christian Watson, if he's around, um, I doubt he'll be there at pick 90, but you know, if they can manufacture a way to get another second round, get a second round pick Watson, um, Sky Moore out of Western Michigan. Those are some options. So, yeah, I think receiver is something that they're going to prioritize. I would be surprised if they don't come away with two of them. And I have to mention a couple other guys. Valus Jones Jr. out of Tennessee, very good player. He's very much in that Debo Sammy mode, as is Eric Ezekama, who's also um, very similar to, to Traylon Burks. Um, he's about 6'3", 208 in that range. And he's a guy, he's a player. There's a lot of receivers in, in this class, so – they could do some things, um, you know, to get some players. You talk about X receivers. Isaiah Weston out of uh, Northern Iowa is a, a very fun player to watch. 6'4", 218. We're talking 4'4", 40 inch vertical. He's legit. He's legit. So, what do you feel like the chances of uh, the Titans shooting for a quarterback, though? Uh, it, it's it's possible. I mean, I think Desmond Ritter was the one, but I. You know, I don't think if the Steelers don't go Malik Willis, Kenny Pickett, like if those guys go six and eight to the Panthers and Falcons, I can see them selecting Ritter. But keep an eye on Sam Howell and Carson Strong. Those are a couple of players. Also get the HBCU mentioned, Alabama A&M's Akil Glass. They were at his pro day. It's crazy to me that only one team was there. And it was the Titans because they have a good receiver, also D. Anderson. So, long story short, I can see them addressing the quarterback position. I don't know about in the first round, but third round and and, and so on and so forth. That's when you know Carson Strong, Akil Glass, like I said, those are guys that they could get. Bailey Zappi uh, out of uh, Western Kentucky as well. Yeah. So I've seen. Uh, so going off your pick, um, going off of the names you picked, it's a lot. Of, it's very receiver talented we don't just have to go for shoots at the first one we can get um and also we have aj and robert woods i actually like robert woods i'm just kind of skeptical about uh acl but as long as we have a secondary we can still do and we've made a lot of lemons out of lemonade what we have for unknown players i wanted to get your breakdown of what do you feel is our actual need i have our position needs being a tight end offensive line wide receiver linebacker db and that's just from all the positions that we lost especially what uh, our biggest loss being we lost questionberry we lost um roger Saffo, big which is one of our biggest pieces that we lost pro bowler um to the bills and then we lost uh jack rabbit jenkins we lost jayon and rashawn evans we lost <clears throat> Julio, which that can go down. And then we again minus Austin Hooper. We haven't had a solid because he hasn't proven himself. We haven't had a solidified tight end since we had John. So I wanted to get what is your feel that we need and who would you get the latest? Um, who would you who do you feel that you would draft if you were the GM in our position in your own Toronto mock draft? Yeah, offensive line I think is is the top need. Then receiver, tight end is in the mix. I know they like Bradley Moore, uh, drafted free agent out of Kansas State. He had a pretty nice camp up until he tore his ACL. So that's another option. You look at corner. I think eventually they're going to need to get a guy, maybe fourth, fifth round. You know, you look at Zion McCollum. You look at Josh Williams. Those are day three prospects that could come in and, and help out. I think another position, and I'm not as focused on linebacker, inside linebacker, because you have Zach Cunningham, you have David Long, who is on the final year of his contract, but you also used a third-round pick on Monty Rice. And then in a pinch, you could get Nick Zubnar in there if you needed him to, to play, but he's more special teams. But you've got three and a possible there at inside linebacker. I think uh, uh, those uh, offensive line is probably the direction I would go, just looking at how the prospects match up to where the Titans pick. And Kenyon Green, Zion Johnson, those guys make a lot of sense, especially Zion Johnson, because you got a guy who can come in and be your starter at, at left guard, but eventually take over at center. Now, he didn't play a lot of center. Um, actually, he didn't play any center at, at Boston College, but he did try to – 
you know, get acclimated to at the senior bowl. So you get some versatility there. Kenyon Green played four out of five positions on the offensive line. So you got a lot of versatility with him. And both of those guys, they're instant starters at, at left guard. So I guess I have a – I don't – I'm not in the the mix of favorable – favorable people picking offensive linemen. I think the only good one I could see us picking was Taylor Lewan. That's our last successful one that we've had that's still on the roster. Other than that, we had – what was the guy from Alabama that he went to the Eagles and got his ring, but he flamed out? Oh, uh, uh, Chance Warmack. Chance Warmack. We had uh, Isaiah um, – Say Wilson. Wilson. He just – he can't get in and out. So our just track record for – in the first round, I feel like we do better grabbing unknown prospects for pick and field roles versus um, primary roles as your first selection. So I don't know. But we also didn't really have that many holes as a team combined. Uh, Ryan Tannehill took the most, if not top three in the league amount of sacks last year. And that mm-hmm. line was two row, uh, uh, revolving for me. So I can understand it. I think um, – I wouldn't be surprised just from the trajectory of how everything played out, especially in free agency. There was no big, big, there's nothing big, big pressing. Um, Maybe we could use it for, you said probably trading to try to get back into the second round. If you get a team that wants to come up to 26, yeah, absolutely. But that's the, that's the thing. It's two to tango, you know, Um, the lines at 32 are interesting because they're probably not going to get a quarterback at number two, but let's say, you know, you're at 26, Desmond Ritter's on the board, Matt Corral's on the board, Sam Howell's on the board. A team could want to jump up above the Lions to grab one of those guys if they really, really like them. So I could see that happening, but it's just it's going to depend on how this board falls. Like you have these random runs on positions. And I, I, if they, if I'm the Titans, I'm hoping for a run on quarterback. So you'll have a team wanting to jump up to get get that guy. Yeah. So I think it'll pan out. I'm looking, like I said, I've seen a bunch of the, I've seen a bunch of picks for alignment for us taking it. Um, where do you feel the that big Goliath edge? I think his last name is Davis for Georgia. Where do you see him going? Oh, uh, the the defense, the tackle, Jordan Davis. Yes. I can see him going to the Ravens. I, I can see that. And man, you put him next to Calais Campbell, like that's a pretty big uh, duo in the middle of the, that defensive line. But Campbell, he has one year left on the deal. Brandon Williams, who was a really good player in his days, he's doesn't look like they're going to bring him back. So I can see Baltimore, but then there's other options too. Uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Tyler Linderbaugh. That's mm-hmm. a guy that I can see the Ravens pick. I can even see the Titans picking him, honestly, if he's there. Then you also look at uh, 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 Jermaine Jones out of Florida State if he's there. So there's some options, but I think Davis fits well with the Ravens. What about uh, Sauce Gardner? How you see him? Man, that's Sauce is nice. He, he's fun to watch, too. And the thing I like about him is he'll pick the ball up. Like, so not only is he stopping receivers, but he's getting those interceptions. I can see Jets. I think that's a really good match for him uh, going to New York. Now, of course, the typical, we have to ask a fan crazy question. Sauce, Davis, Chris Oakley fall to the Titans at 26. And we have the linemen that we just said we needed to address. Who do you draft? Do you still, who do you draft? Uh, And who, uh, was it Chris Olave, you said? Yeah, Chris Olave. I mean, just according to value, if Sauce is there, you got to take him because he's okay. he's a top five player. Mm-hmm. But um, Alave will be a really good option too. I don't think he makes a pair. I think Alave is a top fifteen player. In this yeah, yeah. I mean, those are two that you would you would pick out of those guys and just again just working on pure value. You got to take Sauce. Okay. I would like, because I don't know what I'm going to get out of Farley. I personally would take Davis to match him up with Simmons. I think if you put Simmons and Davis next to each other, especially with Bud Altry, 
I don't care. It, uh, Farley can take all day to learn how to guard routes and stuff because quarterback ain't never gonna get the ball out past them anyway. Um, that's yeah. me, my personal. I'm I'm a defensive person, so of course we spent so long with it being putrid. I feel like the offense can get it, but I did want to make sure I got that fan question about the way if we had all if we had to because again we seen Metcalf and AJ fell to us in the second. We got mm-hmm. Derrick Henry in the second. All of our top perennial players are all. None of them are first round picks outside of Simmons. So yeah. we've done pretty good in the background. So we might get lucky again, especially with the, the change of free agencies. Um before we close it out, uh what are your what are the rest of the plans for Toronto for the rest of the summer? Well, summer coming up because it ain't started. So well, I mean, we have OTA, so phase two will be here and that'll be when they have on field workouts. So it looks like we'll be able to get to a couple of those. Uh, we got actually a draft show next Thursday here in Nashville at a place called Third and Home. It's right by where the Nashville Sounds play. So it'll be myself, I believe it's D. Mason, Chris Sanders, Jared Stillman will be doing that round one. I'm not sure about round two. I'll probably do that from the facility. But, yeah, I mean, we have that going on. And that's pretty much rolling into the season, man. And you have mini camp and everything else, man. And it's just uh, it's, it's about to be on full go. So, uh my last question is just talking for the future. So do you feel like this is going to be a rebuilding uh, season for the Titans or you think that we're going to be right back where we are and just kind of go to the next level? How do you feel like the Titans are going to do next year? I think they're going to do well. I say, what is it, so 17 games. Let's say 11 and 6, 10 and 7, somewhere in that range. Um, we really have to see when uh, Robert Woods comes back. But I don't think it's going to be a rebuilding season at all. I think a high reloading season, you could say, where they're, they're plugging a couple spots in, right? you got to plug in the right tackle, which is, I think Radens is going to end up there. Uh, I don't like Dylan Radens playing on the inside because the strength is a bit of an issue for him. And when you're going against Jordan Davis, you know, Brandon Williams, we mentioned, Calais Campbell, Jeffrey Simmons, those types, you need to be ultra strong. So you put him on the outside, I think he fits there more, but – Long story short, there's a lot of positions that they're they're plugging in, you know, first year starters. So I would say it's more of a reload, and not even a lot of positions. Up three, right? Caleb Farley will be a first year starter. Whoever the left guard is, and whoever the right tackle. Is. Do you feel like uh, you feel like we can find Julio on the back end bargain? Just be like, hey man, I don't man, think, look, he, I don't think, think he wants to. No, I, not him. I don't think the Titans or you as fans should want to. Uh, you gotta let let that ship sail. And I know. I, it's, I, it's just, cool, though. I guess I don't know. It's just it's just yeah, I just want one. I want one Hall of Famer to come here and not be Randy Moss now Julio. I just want one of them to come here and like live up to the name. I get we getting them at the tail end, but I just don't want them to be like the the pit stop to the grave. I don't want this to be Randy Moss, Randy Moss they didn't even pass him the ball. Like the he team. didn't get yeah, he didn't get a touch. So I just yeah. I just want I just wanted to come here and just end like on a good I mean we made it to the playoffs so we ain't do like as bad as Randy but I just want one happy farewell story. See, but I'll let that go. Two cracks at the Julio Jones experience. I, I'm, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. I don't want. I don't want no more. It, I'm done with it. I'm tired of yeah. it. But uh, yeah, let uh, it let it sail. Because week in and week out, you're like, okay, is he healthy? Is he healthy? Is he healthy? No. That had to be. That had to be healthy, y'all. I mean, it. it listen, I, like my checks cash regardless. So <laughs> I don't mind if he plays or if he doesn't. I, I'm a fan of football, so I like seeing him play. But you know, it's all good for me. Like, it's it gives me content, but. You know, for Titans fans, I know it's it's definitely torturous because you're hoping that he plays. And if I feel like if you're a real Titans fan, and I made this part quick, we don't lost so much. I could care less about the regular season, so I didn't care about what he was doing until it came to playoff time. And when we got to the playoffs, he just happened to show up, but we lost. So I didn't care about none of the regular season. Just if we, I needed to see what our record was. Once we got into the playoffs, did not care. The same with Derek and all that. The final offensive play. He wasn't on the field. Oh, I know that. that and no, also, yeah, neither was AJ. <laughs> I just want, I just want this it to be, I just want this to be said. That play is direct mirror of AJ Brown being open a year prior to when he threw it to Marcus Peters. When the play makes no sense, he throws it into traffic. When I think it was Ferkser wide open in front of him, 
It was the exact mirror when he threw it to Khalif Raymond. And A.J. Brown was wide open on the left side of the field, beating coverage, and we could have won again. In both of these games, we lost by less than a touchdown. All yeah. under the helm. But I'll end it there. I don't want to go. This isn't this isn't my therapy session of why we should let go. Of, <laughs> you know, but I ain't in Tannehill, I trust. But, hey, I'm not it's in Tannehill. Is this your fun? Is this your do good this year. You said what? I hope he do good this year. Oh, he, he better hope he better hope he did. I know what I hope he better hope he do. He yeah. got I know I don't I know he had to be the last one to leave that building. I know he had to wait till everybody, I mean everybody in the city left before he can get to his car. Mm-hmm. Now he was getting escorted. Yeah, jacked up. <laughs> it's exactly. Is this your favorite part of the year? Because I know you this is the most extensive uh you know filming and in depth and and um player description that you get to do. Is this your favorite part? Uh from that perspective, yes, but I mean, I, I love the season. Uh, it, it's you can't beat that, especially when it gets to the playoffs, and you kind of feel that energy. So, December, January, if we're fortunate, February. Those are my that's my time. I got you. Have you been keeping up with the playoffs? Yeah, I have, man. I, I have been keeping up with the playoffs. You know, I watched the Sixers oh, closely. Yeah. They uh, lost yesterday, but you know, I, I've been keeping up. I see these Nets that, get is six, six, the Sixers. Is that your team? No, I don't. You know, I don't really have a team. I like players, but uh, Embiid is one of my favorite players, and that's home perennial team. big man. Perennial big man. I don't yeah. think enough credit. Like big, powerful, can shoot threes, soft touch, can shoot layups. Like revolutionary player. But yeah. I like him. But yeah, yeah, I think yeah, they're, they're solid. We got Maxi. Um, yeah, but I've been keeping up with it. Yeah, I'm waiting for them to uh, go ahead and end um, the. I'm waiting for the Celtics to go back. What you said a second Boston, ago. Yeah, to go Boston, ahead. Boston been killing. Oh, Boston been whooping their ass. Like it's nothing. Oh, Boston been killing. Yeah, that, that I was on another show and they asked me to pick a team like that could win and nobody saw them. But I'm like, yo, Jason yeah. Tatum and that crew. Yeah, Jason Tatum. Boston. Yeah. You did not see how they yeah. playing. Yeah, Boston. Sure they've been, they been real like they've been real like that though for years. It's just they keep running into unfavorable matchups. But uh you see uh your man's already ruled out for game four. Reggie Miller went off on him. Uh yeah. seven. he already ruled out. I don't even know what you traded for him for, but that I know, uh, yeah. listen, listen, I know uh, you gotta you gotta tiptoe around the, the mental health thing. That though. outfit was fire though, but your game skills yeah. terrible. But that outfit was he, okay. I get yeah, yeah, he he might as well give it up. I, I don't know what I, to I do. Tell, I tell you why I enjoy watching. I was watching yesterday was was uh, Ja. I love yeah. Ja Memphis, man. I just I just like his game, the his energy. swag, his style, yep. his energy. I like Ja. I yeah. love watching him play. That foul he trouble play real well too. You know. Yeah, they they like fifteen deep. I think Ja's biggest um, issue is Ja tries to play too much chip on his shoulder too much and it's going to he's going to run into a rut of the team is just so good that he could play like that but he's going to run into a problem where he keep talking and i can see it in his play style that he's trying to back it up and it's like when he slapped beverly for that think third or fourth foul in like the second or third quarter it's like you can see it and then they could have easily won that game but i mean cat stretching out on step back threes i mean it is what it is but you should have never gave up game one in Memphis, but I can see them still taking it to six or seven games. But I like Ja. I just think for the second round, I think he needs to just hone it in and just mm-hmm. don't worry about whoever was on bandwagon. Just go do what you need to do because Golden State, Golden State got some boys out there, and I don't care all this. Oh, I don't care all the hype you want to do. Pool, Clay, Steph, and Draymond. They got a new splash brother. Exactly. Clay, 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 Draymond, Clay. Draymond taking hearts out there, man. Exactly. So I don't care all. It, it, it ain't enough grit, grime. I don't care. Uh, shut up because Golden State is not playing out there. Yeah. So. No. Yeah. They, like, they, like Steph, they like Steph is back. I was like, shit, Steph ain't been going nowhere. Steph we already knew what Steph could do. Steph coming right. off the bench. Jordan Poole is like Steph and Clay 2.0. So, like, they can't. You got Wiggins, too. With, exactly. And mm, you got Gary like, Payton Jr. on defense. Like, they're, they're they, look, they look good. They look good out there. Like, just like his daddy. Then, if you forget right. Wiseman, Wiseman somewhere down there, he, whenever he get better, you know, if they could do that to pool, you know they're going to make Wiseman the next Draymond. So, mm-hmm. I know uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up. What is your summer plans? What's Toronto's summer plans outside of football that you got coming uh, up? I was just in Vegas. Um, last week, 
I don't really have. I, I may shoot back to yeah. That Vegas is expensive, man. <laughs> Vegas, Vegas is crazy. Expensive. And I, I they, know that, right? Yeah, that's tough. Um, I'll probably shoot back up to Philly at some point. Um, I may go to Houston in June, but I don't really have too many plans to be honest with you. Hey, shoot, we we all over the age of thirty. We know it's chilling now. Just go to yeah. sleep, sleep in. So yep. I got you. But uh, Josh, did you have anything to say? No, nah, I was just gonna say because because I know you said you kind of chilled out more than normal this year. So what what's like just a hobby that you normally do that you that you've been doing that you've been doing now? You know, I I got more into uh, like getting my body back in order. You know what I mean? So I've been doing more running. I run about two miles a day. Uh, oh, I get amazing. my push ups and my you know callus all my calisthenics and push ups crunches. Uh, mountain climbers, all that stuff. So that's been the thing that I've picked up the most was, and I had I had been running and, and you know doing stuff to stay in shape, but I, I got a, a little more hyper focused on it this this off season. So that probably would be the one thing. Okay, like I said, just in case you know they need LH up there, you know what I'm saying just keep yourself ready for to run a three route or something. Just surviving, you know. <laughs> Stop just it, go. turn, you know. All we need is just three yards. We got you. They keep that. I told uh, okay. them. Never know. You know, they, you, they went through ninety. You know, they might need a Bobby Boucher. So, but we appreciate <laughs> you definitely coming on. It's gonna be we a, do, a lit do. lit draft. Uh, we we know it's gonna. Be, you could have waited extra a week. You could have been out in Vegas for the draft. I know it's gonna be lit out there this year. Um, yes. Especially if we turned it out. But we thank you for coming on. Hopefully, again to see you again at this, uh, <clears throat> this upcoming season. I know you got a good week packed for you, so we appreciate you. Uh, Josh, you ain't got nothing to pass before I bounce. I ain't got nothing, man. The only thing I got, man, is like, I appreciate y'all. You know, I'm finna go on deployment next week. So, you know, I'm, I'm gonna try my best to come in and out. But if not, you know what I'm saying? It's been, like I always say, a good experience. It's been a great year. You know, and we just gonna keep moving. Why you make sound like you're going to jail? Okay. You I mean, I mean deployment might as well be. I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? I'm out. <laughs> appreciate the service for sure. Exactly, man. Just make sure you get all your military discounts before you go. So this has been another episode <laughs> of the Eight More Than Ninety Two podcast. We always keep one hundred. We're gonna holler at y'all later. Thank you, Teron, for coming back on with us. Peace. Back in this bitch, uh. No, we full attack in this shit, uh. You know the full Mac came equipped, uh. So promise you don't.